There's Russell. Yeah. Reba. You got Barry. But what about that guy? Good. Hey, there you go. Flame and lips. <laughs> hey, yo. of the famous Guest Room Records. We are in Oklahoma City for one of my favorite days of the year, Record Store Day. Our love of music at Dogfish runs just as deep as our love for beer, and today's an extra special day for me because we did a beautiful collaboration with one of my favorite bands in history, The Flaming Lips. Today's episode is all about a couple of my favorite things, music, beer, independence, and collaboration. This is gonna be fun. Flaming Lips are one of the most innovative and collaborative rock bands of all time. With more than 30 years of experience in music and iconic status in Oklahoma City. It was a dream to be able to visit them on their home turf to bring together fans of indie music and indie beer through one super unique collaboration. And while I was in town, it was my goal to steal lead singer Wayne Coyne away from the throngs of fans and sit down at the beautiful 21C Hotel to pick his brain about the creative process and get his reactions to a few different collaborative brews. The first part of our journey is this beautiful West Side drink mm -hmm. from our friends at Anthem and Stone Cloud. This is a cool story about weaving together independent brewers that by nature you'd say, oh well the independent thing must mean that they're always just on their own doing their own thing. But this is a case of two breweries here in Oklahoma City who instead of getting pissed off the first brewer when right. another brewery was opening right. down the yeah, road, yeah. Yeah. they helped each other, you know, borrowing grain, borrowing equipment. And when the second brewer finally opened Stone Cloud, the first brewer, Anthem, reached out and said, hey, let's do a collaboration to try wow. and get more people yeah, yeah. to come to this part of the city. So take a sip. It's, it's a Brett Pale Ale. Now, Brett is uh, basically a special yeast that will give it sort of a clovey, dry character. See, I like it how you're 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 able to describe what's in it. You get cloves. You get a little clovey thing going on. Clovey. See, that spicy. would be that would be too advanced yeah. for 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 my <laughs> palate at the moment. See, this is a good beer. Beautiful, right? Yeah, that's a good beer. I mean, I wouldn't be able to describe it in detail like you are, but good's a, 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 an adjective all brewers want to hear <laughs> when they're asked, "What do you think of my beer?" It's good, so that's yeah. that's great to hear. You guys have chosen to stay in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City. How has that informed your your journey in in, in the band? Right. How big of that is a part of the Flaming Lips? For us, we would always say, well, our music is made in our mind. It's not really made in an area. But in time, I think this story of, you know, Santa Claus comes from the North Pole. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, cool, yeah. Uh, you know, the Beatles come from Liverpool. Um, the Flaming Lips come from Oklahoma. and. That little thing, very first times we ever played somewhere, you'd read the, the two lines that they'd write about you in the local paper, and it, they'd say, the Flaming Lips, making this music, and they come from Oklahoma. In the same way that Flaming Lips are proudly synonymous with Oklahoma, you guys are also synonymous with collaboration, and that's the next phase of our liquid <laughs> journey. We're gonna talk collaboration. Later. Excellent. So this is Collaboration Not Litigation from Avery Brewery and Russian River Brewery. The craft brewing industry is 99% asshole free, <laughs> and these two are helping us keep our odds together. There's a great story that kind of personified that where unbeknownst to either of them, they both decided in the like 2005 to name a beer Salvation. And instead of like luring up and getting into yeah. trademark wars, they yeah. said, how about we do our, our each do Salvation and let's do a blend of our Salvations and call the beer Collaboration not litigation. Wow. It really is that idea of instead of being like, you're not my enemy. If you're, you know, if you're doing what I'm doing and you might do it better than me, then you're my enemy and I should, I should destroy you. I think when creative people are around other creative people, they love it. I always sort of say it's, it's like having our superpower. You're helping me. Right. You're giving me energy. You're giving me ideas. Yeah. You're making me 
rethink the things that I had doubts about. Yeah. And that's really the truth. We always say that uh, we're more focused on the good karma that comes with focusing on collaboration than the negative energy that comes with focusing on competition. You know? See, that, you said that good, <laughs> damn. Try the goodness okay. of these two breweries. So like I said, this one's gonna be a little stronger. So yeah, Belgian, yeah, you warned me, yeah. Belgian dark ale that's fermented warm with a Belgian yeast that will throw esters like fruity, peachy, caramely character. Yeah, I right? love that. See, I think now you've, you've given that to me before I taste it. Well, maybe, maybe I'm off, let's see. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely got a good vibe to it. You liking it? But if you drink too much of this, you're gonna get drunk pretty quick. You gotta pace yourself. <laughs> Quality over quantity, Wayne. I loved what you said about the superpowers, and I always think of it and then raise my children to say, you know, everyone has their own unique superpowers, and everyone, with every decision they make, can either use those powers for good or for evil. And, you know, creatively finding like minded people, like you said, if someone's doing something similar but in their own way and they've yeah. got their own superpowers, you're like, how can we? fight evil together by making exactly. something yeah. creative. You using yeah. your superpowers, me using mine. Can you give an example of one that blew your mind in the last 30 years of how how, how in sync you and that collaborative partner yeah, were I mean, on? I mean, I mean, Miley is, I mean, she's like that as well. You know, you think um, she's Miley Cyrus and she's a great singer and she's a flamboyant freak or whatever. Yeah. And people are still insecure. You know, the idea like, I don't really know if, if what I'm doing is gonna work or if it's any good. And people that allow that you, you to see that, we all have that anyway. I don't know, it's so you said you're invested in it, but it's not just invested like I wanted to succeed, you're emotionally in it. And these are, these people, they're not, they become more than your friends, it's people that you love. So we'll go from the collaborations of other fine folks that put their hearts on their sleeves and trusted each other to the one we got to do together. Excellent, let's, all right, yeah, all let's right. Let's do this. Music has always been one of my biggest inspirations at Dogfish, so it's always been a dream of mine that my beer would inspire musicians as well. For this two-way collab, I teamed up with indie rock legends The Flaming Lips to create Dragons and Yum Yums, a tropical pale ale packed with dragon fruit, yum berry, passion fruit, and black carrot juice. Lead singer Wayne Coyne then wrote lyrics inspired by the brew for a special release called The Story of Yum Yum and Dragon, pressed into super limited vinyl records injected with the beer itself. There's music in the beer and beer in the music, literally. Look at the color <laughs> of that one. It's that amazing. Beautiful color. But the most like um, important in terms of how it turned out ingredients. Damn it, that's good. <laughs> right? So yeah. the, the dragon fruit, the yum berries, the black carrot juice, those are probably the most important ingredients in terms of how it turned out. And they add fruitiness, but it's like an astringent, dry, not sweet. I see, so you're fruitiness. saying astringent. This is like the sour, this is the mm -hmm. sour part of it that we're- Yeah, yeah. like a yeah. tart thing yeah. coming from the fruit. We jumped on the phone a little over a year ago and I said, these are some ingredients that we're already thinking about brewing and then I sent you a package and then you kind of took it from there with the musical part of the journey, right? Well, you know, like you mentioning the ingredients and, you know, the idea that maybe those could be worked into something. And so I just turned, you know, some of the ingredients into these characters and then you start having this story. And I think I drew this at the kitchen table. And even this idea that he's got an ear and he's got three noses or whatever. Right. You know, and all no this. eyes on one of the yeah. characters. <laughs> well, that's part of the story. So yeah, and, and you're and you were encouraging when you know when I showed you these characters and I think it was just another one of those, oh man, this is this is becoming something. Our first conversation where I threw out some ingredient ideas and you didn't say that was stupid. You're like, <laughs> ooh, I kinda like where this is going. The next sentence out of your mouth was, Well, if we do a vinyl for record store day, put beer in the vinyl. Yes. And I was like, Yes. Who could that really happen? Well see. I'm coming at it from, well, I don't know how it could happen, but I know it could happen for sure, because we've done, it wasn't a seven inch, yeah. but it was a bigger record filled with human blood. 
And the blood that was in it was the actual people that are on the record. Jim James, I've got Chris Martin from Coldplay, I've got Kesha's blood. Actually, their blood. It's two normal pieces of vinyl, right. and then there's this little thing that's carved Concave out in the middle. Like yeah. And the way that we put the blood into our record, right. I had a big bowl Rockstar's of blood. blood. <laughs> Literally fill it full. I would stick it in the little hole, yeah, yeah. and then we had this little rubber cement that would just fill it up. And do you have video of you combining Kesha's blood I do. with Jim James' do. blood? I do. Absolutely, Christmas. yeah. Did sparks and smoke start coming of out of this course, cauldron? Of course it did, yeah. <laughs> We've put a lot of our blood, sweat, tears, our hard work. Totally, yeah. Into what we make, so. And it, and it is, I mean, it is a strange thing to see. I mean, you think these days all the things that can be made, and it's still, yeah. it's still a fascinating thing to see. It's super cool. Look at it is. behind the beer, right? line them up, <laughs> right? Craftsmanship is the process, not the product, and I have enjoyed this process with you immensely. Cheers, Wayne. When it comes to collaborators, I've rarely met someone as enthusiastic and creatively invested as Wayne Coyne. Touring Oklahoma City with its unofficial mayor and most recognized rock star was pretty epic. And as a music nerd trapped inside a brewer's body, it was exciting and a little nerve-wracking to see Flaming Lips fans try this vibrant, tasty beer we made together. As fun as the process is, a collaboration can't realize its full potential until it's living out in the world, making people say, that's odd, let's drink it. <laughs>